Hello everyone and welcome to a rare episode of the Good and Basic Cooking Show. On this channel we really like corn. We've grown our own corn, we've made it in tortillas, and we've also made it into parched corn. Today I'm going to show you how to do that. In order to make parched corn, you're going to need some kind of pan. Here I'm using a cast iron skillet. You'll need a spoon to stir the kernels around with, oil to lightly coat the pan, and of course, the corn itself. In theory, you should be able to use virtually any kind of dent or field corn. This is just white corn from a Mexican market. Depending on what kind of corn you use, you may get slightly different results. You'll notice that these kernels are a lot larger and longer than most corn kernels, so that's kind of interesting, but I've made it before with this and it hasn't caused any problems. You may also need a lid. Although it's not popcorn, sometimes the parched corn as it cooks can be pretty explosive and fly all over the place. So you may want a lid to help keep that under control. First, go ahead and turn on the stove to medium or medium high heat. Next, put a thin layer of oil on the pan. You can go ahead and let that swirl around. You can put the corn on immediately or wait until the oil reaches its smoke point. If you've made popcorn on a stove before, you know that the amount of popcorn that you use is limited by the surface area of the pan because you need a layer one kernel deep. For parched corn, it's exactly the same. You want a layer one kernel deep across the pan, no deeper. If necessary, stir or shake the pan to spread out the kernels. As soon as the kernels are on, you're going to want to start stirring them around and checking to see how done they are. We're aiming for a lightly brown, golden, toasted, buttery look. Stirring and shaking occasionally also prevents the kernels from burning. Now, as I said, the popping can sometimes get pretty explosive and start sending kernels everywhere. If that's the case, you may want to use a lid and then just take it off every 15 seconds or so in order to stir the kernels. You want to be careful to not overcook it. You don't want it blackened, just golden brown. When it looks like most of the kernels have been toasted, go ahead and turn off the heat. You could also just take it directly off the heat to start cooling it. Now that it's cooled, you can pour it or spoon it into a bowl. You may also want to salt it lightly or use other seasonings to improve the flavor. Again, what you're aiming for is a golden, toasty brown appearance. You can also see how some of the kernels have split and cracked. That's fine. And that is how you too can make your own parched corn, especially if you want to try the parched corn challenge or the parched corn and beef jerky challenge that I just did. If you did like the video, we'd sure appreciate a like and subscribe. And if your interest is know more about corn, we have done a ton more projects with corn, including growing our own Hopi Blue Drop resistant corn. And if you are going to try to make your own parched corn, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.